And one way to encourage ourselves is if we improve by 1% a day, we can improve much in 100 days. So we keep encouraging ourselves. Now this is one way to look at improvement. Sometimes people say, I'm, I still have sins. Actually, okay, now if I use an il illustration, if a person has lust, he tried to overcome the sin, okay? For a short time, he doesn't have lust. He's thanking God. And then he has lust again. And then he handled it. So he keep handling it. Maybe one day he has 100 times that he has lust. But he overcome it 100 times. Now that is great. But he still has many times the lust will come into his mind. But the more he handles it, the less will the lustful thoughts come. The more he handles his lust, the more he says, he says, well, God is good. Following God is great. I want to love God. I want to follow God. If he continue to have this thought, he will have less and less lust. When we have a close relationship with God, we'll have less and less lust. And then he's improving. So if we improve a little bit a day, we should thank God and we should be happy. I'm improving a little bit. Or if I put it another way, someone took, you know, a long time. Uh, you know, he stayed in the lust for a long time, but now he overcome it in a few minutes. Now, that's still not fast enough, but he overcomes it in a few minutes instead of one hour. That is improvement. And then next time he overcome it in one minute. And then next time he overcome it in a few seconds. So that is improvement. And then he should thank God for that and he should be happy about it. And then he can rejoice in the Lord. Philippians 4 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, pure, lovely, good reports, any virtue, all these things, if there's any praiseworthy, meditate on this thing. So if we improve, meditate on it. Thank God I'm improving. Thank God I'm overcoming the sins now. Thank God I have less lust now. Thank God. So we encourage ourselves for any kind of improvement. That's very important. Instead of <clears throat> saying there's still a long way to improve. Instead of saying there's a long way to improve, we say, I have improved today and I will continue to improve. Okay, now so that uh, was the end of it. And if you have any question, please send to me. I thank God that God has given me this simple way to overcome sins. Many people find it very difficult. And God gave me this wisdom to analyze the process of sins and how to stop the sins while they are in our mind. Okay, we'll move on to the next topic. Help people to experience the Holy Spirit. So this is something very helpful in ministry. It's very helpful in building up people's, um, <clears throat> uh, building up their spiritual life and building up the life so that they can serve God and also strengthen our uh, ministry of God. Okay, now first we need to understand what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I want to say experiencing the Holy Spirit is different from being filled with the Holy Spirit. Experiencing the Holy Spirit is just, it, it could be a one-time experience. Some people attend a meeting and then they experience the Holy Spirit, they feel very joyful, they think they are Spirit feel, that's not necessarily true. Spirit feel is a continual, re co strong relationship with God. So being filled with the Holy Spirit means having a very intimate relationship with God and turn away from the sins and following God's will and the Great Commission. The Holy Spirit comes to us to give us power to do evangelism and build up the spiritual life of people. And then it helps us to dedicate our lives to God and doing things for God's glory and not our own glory. So being filled with the Holy Spirit means a constant good relationship with God. And then we turn away from all sin and following God's will and uh, 
that we dedicate our life to God and doing things to, uh, to serve God and for God's glory. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is continuous. It's different from a one-time experience, uh, one time, a one-time ex experience, I'm sorry, it's not experiencing, from a one-time experience of the Holy Spirit. Now, ways that people can experience the Holy Spirit. First, peace. When we experience the Holy Spirit, very often people can feel very peaceful. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. That's Jesus, uh, what Jesus said. Burdens removed. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So when we pray to God and God take away our burdens, that's one way we experience the Holy Spirit. Three, body in rest and comfort. Psalm 16, 9, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. So the mind and the spirit and the body all are in comfort and in peace that we can experience physical peace and a mental and spiritual peace. And love. Uh, Romans 5, 5, Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts, by the Holy Spirit who was given to us, that the Holy Spirit can give us strong love. The more we meditate on God's love, the more we pray together with other Christians, the more we'll experience His love. I remember the first time we experienced the powerful love of God from uh, when Carlos and Acondia, the evangelists from Argentina, South America, came to Hong Kong, and they laid hand on me, and I felt power like electricity. And there was strong love that entered me, so powerful, I cried for a long time. I said, wow, this is so wonderful that I can experience God's love like that. So it's wonderful. And I have experienced love uh, not as powerful as that, but constantly I experience love now. And also there are some times that I experience strong love. One time I was praying with someone, and then when I was praying, I said, Lord, let your love come. The moment I said that, wow, immediately I felt a strong love and I cried out. Oh. And now every time I, I cry out to God, I experience His joy together with His love. I feel loved. God is so wonderful. So I, I know the taste of heaven. One day we can go to heaven and we'll experience much more powerful love and joy and inner healing. Isaiah 61, 1, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, so it will heal our, our uh, emotions, uh, heal our uh, experiences of being hurt by other people, and physical healing. By His stripes we are healed, that when the Holy Spirit comes, we can have healing of ourselves or, or for other people. And then demons being driven out. In my name they will cast out demons. I have uh, done this many times. Sometimes I cast out demons from people. Sometimes I, I was just preaching. Sometimes I was, I was leading worship. And then the evil spirit from some people is manifested. And uh, because they have the evil spirit and they respond to uh, the presence of God when I was preaching or leading, eating worship. And uh, you know, also Another thing I did not list is uh, power. Sometimes, you know, I was speaking and then some people would feel the power coming to them. That the power of the Holy Spirit could come to people. Another sign that what people experience is speaking in tongue. Now, speaking in tongue is something we don't want to learn from people. It's very important. I know there are some people who say, try to say it. Say hallelujah, hallelujah very fast and then eventually you speak in tongue. That's not speaking in tongue. Speaking in tongues doesn't come from practice. Speaking in tongues comes from the infilling of the Holy Spirit. When a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, he can start, suddenly start to speak in tongues. But don't think of imitating. Just let it come naturally. Now, when I started, it was like this. It was one time I was in a meeting and the preacher came down and then he was saying to someone, to my church member, Actually, that church member speak in tongue, and that pastor said to the church member, speak in tongue. The moment he said that, 
immediately behind him, I was standing behind him, and my tongue started to move. I feel power to my mouth. You know, actually when I speak in tongue, when I think of Jesus, sometimes my mouth starts to vibrate. So that was how I, it started with me. It, I, I did not make it happen. It's the Holy Spirit that makes it happen. So don't ever try to imitate speaking in tongue. You know, if people imitate speaking in tongue, it, it's not speaking in tongue. It's just m mimicking sounds. That is not going to do any good. So we must discern in the Bible, speaking in tongue never comes by imitate, Im imitation or by a learning from someone. It, it doesn't come from learning. And Jesus promised to give us power of the Holy Spirit for evangelism. Acts 1.8 And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So that's the promise of Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes for power for evangelism. Power to serve God. And God wants to fill all people with the Holy Spirit and gives them spiritual guidance. Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. He wants to pour out His Spirit on all Christians. And actually non-Christians, when, you know, when they are touched by the Holy Spirit and they want to believe in Jesus, then the Holy Spirit will come upon them. But very often, when the Holy Spirit touches someone, He might not respond. He rejects the Holy Spirit. Then He won't be filled with the Holy Spirit. But if a person really treasure God, really accept God, he can experience the incoming of the Holy Spirit, a strong power coming from God. I remember the time when I first heard the gospel. I, uh, you know, at that time I realized there are proofs about God. And then my schoolmates invited me to a meeting and when the preacher invite us to raise our hand if we want to believe in Jesus. I raise my hand. And then he said, stand up. And I dare not stand up. And then uh, he said a few times, stand up. I still did not stand up. And then, he's, uh, and then finally he's, he started to pray. And then in the middle of the prayer, I, I just want to stand up. The moment I stood up, I felt some kind of power, some kind of light come upon me. So when we really accept Jesus, accept Jesus and really appreciate Jesus, really like Jesus, the power of God can come upon us. Anytime, even when you read the Bible, when you say, God, you're so good, so good, so good, and then the power of God can come upon us. When we rejoice in the Lord, the power of the, of the Lord and the joy, joy of the Lord can come upon us. So that's something we can you know, build up this relationship. Anytime we think of anything, we say, thank God for that, thank God for that, and all day long, think of good things about God, and all day long, try to praise God as much as possible. And Jesus promised to give us miracles. Mark 16, 15. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So Jesus has promised us that. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to, to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. And then these signs will follow those who believe that we can cast out demons and speak with new tongues. And then these two signs uh, uh, 
are signs I think is for the time of persecution they will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly it will by no means hurt them so in a in a time of persecution if people pour uh, put, put a snake onto us that God can protect us so that the snake won't bite us or they force us to drink poison and then still it won't hurt us so it's not for us to try every day and try to touch a serpent or try to drink some poison every day so these two are uh, for us for uh, not for ordinary situation for special situation and then lay hand on the sick and they will recover now here we see that God wants everyone to lay hand on the sick God wants everyone because it says here these signs will follow those who believe so everyone who believes can do that now the point is if a person has evil spirit he should not lay hand on people now what what is the basis of this because God created the angels and some of the angels fell and became demons and so demons came from angels and so they share some quality as the Holy Spirit that the angels came from the Holy Spirit and so they share the qualities of the Holy Spirit that you know angels are holy and full of love and joy the demons don't have love and joy but they still share some qualities for instance they are transmittable through touch that you know as spirit-filled Christians we lay hand on someone the Holy Spirit can come upon that person now that it's just helping the person the person has to still continue to build up his relationship with God for him to keep the presence of the Holy Spirit when we lay hand on people it doesn't mean that that he doesn't need to pray he, do, he will continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit he need to continue to build up a good relationship with God so evil spirit came from angels angels came from the Father Son and Holy Spirit so they share the quality of the Holy Spirit being transmittable through touch so evil spirit can also be transmitted through touch and that is practiced also by some people in their cults that they lay hand on some people and these people will receive the evil spirit so if a Christian still has evil spirit that has not been driven out or he has serious sin or serious emotional problem then he should not lay hand on people because his sins and his evil spirit can affect the other person but if a person handles his problem the pastors should train your members train the members to build up a good relationship with God and praise God all the time and have faith it's very important to have faith in God and then we can be filled with the Holy Spirit we can have more people filled with the Holy Spirit and then we can lay hand on people and then we will see people healed or see people experience the joy of the Lord the peace of the Lord uh, and demons driven out and then so there will be more soldiers of God when we lay hand on people and help them to be filled with the Holy Spirit so Jesus has promised us that we can have this power of the Holy Spirit and then God gives us supernatural spiritual gifts 1st Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 on it talks about the Holy Spirit gives us words, give us words of wisdom words of knowledge faith gifts of healing working of miracles prophecy discerning of spirits different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues now these are all supernatural gifts now the Holy Spirit also give the natural gifts but actually the natural gifts are still uh, supernatural for instance the gift of preaching the gift of teaching the gift of administration God give us these gifts but he also give us um, gifts of uh, words of wisdom words of knowledge these are words that we can speak that with, that shows the wisdom of God or shows the knowledge of God that we know something that we don't necessarily uh, don't ordinarily know or faith in a sense that we have faith in God to have power in God and gift of healing to heal people uh, now 
actually every Christian can pray for other people to be healed. But some people have a stronger gift of healing. And working on miracles and prophecy and discerning of spirit and different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Now, all this, we want to do it for the glory of God, not for our own glory. If people, you know, they pray for people and people get healed and then they get proud, then what happens is God doesn't like what they do. So when we have pride, God doesn't like what we do. We, we should realize that it's when, when we do all these things, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. In our heart, we want to say, Lord, Lord, please help me to be thankful to you for your healing, to be thankful for you for doing the miracles. It's your work. I want to give glory to you. I don't want to take any glory. I, want, I don't want pride to take away the blessings from you. So it's very important that we don't let pride or other things. Now, sometimes people, you know, I know there are some people who pray for people and then they demand money. You know, people can give, but we don't demand money from people. And also, some people want power, and that's why they want the power of the Holy Spirit, instead of want the glory of God. If we want the glory of God, God will bless us. So we should not use our own way to, you know, to, uh, to build up ourselves. We should let God build up ourselves. Okay, now... One very important key to be filled with the Holy Spirit is praying in spirit and in truth. That we worship in spirit and in truth.